Antique, noun, a collectible object that has a high value because of its considerable age. You've seen it before, a work of art, a piece of furniture that's been in your family since long before your time. In other words, antiques. And they're endangered. In a world where things no longer seem built to last, antiques are no longer what they used to be. Has our culture become too disposable? We sat down with three craftspeople, a clockmaker repairman, an antique radio repairman, and a violin maker to explore modern craftsmanship. My name is John Hutchison. I'm third generation clock repairer in the family. I've been doing this on my own for about 20 years. My grandfather started this back in the 1940s. Uh, I started when I was 15, 16 years old working for my dad, carrying on the family trade was something I wanted to, to do. They're basically a clock is a 200, 300 year old philosophy and it hasn't changed. One wheel pushes the other wheel. My goal is to make that clock like it was new when it was produced. What I do is strictly with the mechanics. But if you look at the clock dial or the clock case, well that's design and art all together. I mean if you look at these dials over here, it's about 230 years old. I feel like I'm contributing to the history of that clock. I'm Bob Esslinger from Antique Radio Restoration and Repair. We're in Pomfret, Connecticut, and I restore antique radios for a living. In junior high school and high school, I work for a number of auto body shops restoring car radios. Radio goes and from there, I gravitated to uh, antique radios, and I haven't looked back since. When a radio arrives here, it's usually in pretty sad shape. Some have been painted green, <laughs> a big mistake. What we'll do is rebuild it and refinish it so it looks and plays like the day it left the factory. When you restore a radio, you want to do it in a way that even a museum would want it done. You want to use the original factory parts and you want to make sure that the wire is the same type as the original. We have the ability to put it all back together again. My name is Dennis McCartan. Uh, I'm a violin maker in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. I have been involved with violin making and violin repair roughly 20 years. Every violin maker you talk to will explain that sometime in their early life they, they were just smitten with the violin. I started looking around for violins to just, you know, fiddle with, excuse that pun, but um, it is a process of shaping the wood so that it will make the best shape as well as the best sound. This is, you know, this is the first step in building a violin, is those blocks inside the violin are glued into these openings. And it really does take an artist's eye to make a beautiful violin and to make a good sounding violin. He has to have an artist's ear as well, I suppose. It's a fabulous thing. Newer isn't always better. And you'll find this with many, many things, not just radios. Unfortunately, we live in a throwaway society today. And it's a shame because you buy something brand new, you're pretty much guaranteed that in anywhere from two to five years, it's going to be garbage. Well, you know, there's a whole class of violins that are built, uh, mass produced, mostly for the student market. There's no artistry involved with them except that they copy the shape. The fact that the human spirit is invested in the thing is what makes the thing permanent and lasting and desirable and worth fixing. Most of the clocks that come in here are sentimental to my customers. Either they inherited it from Uncle Bill or Aunt Millie. And oftentimes this is all they have from that era to remind them of Grandma or Grandpa or Mom or Dad. And they'll say, oh, I didn't know you were here. My grandfather had a violin. Can I bring it in? And I say, please do. It's just a part of that person's past. 40, 50 years ago, there would have been a watch and clock maker, maybe not in every corner, but one in every town, and now there's like two or three of us in the whole state of Rhode Island. We see a gradual decline. You know, we're, not, we're not sure how much of that is due to the, um, the economy. A majority of our customers are in their 50s, 60s, 70s. A lot of them are going on retiring. They're on fixed incomes. I need to grab another 20, 25 years of this, and I think I'll be okay. But you're right, the need for me is, is less and less. I wasn't sure what the future held. 
Um, I just knew I'd be really angry with myself if I didn't give myself a chance. I just hope though, because eventually I'm going to retire. It's time for a younger generation to step up. There will always be a need, because even the guy who's young today, he inherits a clock from a family member. He'll take an interest in that little clock, take care of it, and keep it going. Uh, I think as long as violins exist, there'll be people around to fix them. Open yourself up to the possibilities, and uh, you'll be pleasantly surprised. This is what I love to do, and this is what I'll do until I retire. I am confident that what I do is good work. If not the best, it's good. Craftsmanship represents a union between precision and creativity, science and art. Let's take a look at our definition of antique again. Antique, noun, a collectible object that has a high value because of its considerable age, a piece of legacy.